Let's look at the official first step that I think we should all hit when we're going to create illustrations or anything that we want to be finished, um, have, a, have a relatively high level of polish, and that's the sketching and the thumbnail phase. Now, there's lots of different ways that we can sort of handle this, right? Um, but the, the most important thing is that we sort of are, are free to play around Right, so if we think about the sort of idea phase, right, heading into right the sketch phase, um, and after this we'd sort of do um, uh, the rough, right, and then we'd sort of head into right. In my case, it would be a finished line drawing, right? And then into sort of the color block in, right? And then to finish and polish, right? So the, the, the important thing with process is to make sure that we have a a nice break at, at certain points in the image, right? And the first the first and most important thing I think is that we sort of separate the idea of our sort of sketch, right? The idea right coming up with the idea from the sort of um, rough drawing. And the other thing I think that's important to do is to kind of have a separation between our rough drawing and our kind of finished process, right? So there's essentially like sort of three main, three main process levels that we're going to sort of hit. And again, they, they break down very simply and they have very simple functions and it's important to separate them. That's basically my, my contention. Um, the first is, and we talked a little bit about this with the sort of the, the coming up with the idea mentally. Um, and the second thing would be sort of starting to turn that idea into reality, right? Making it real, making it into something that, you know, we can actually see and assess visually, which is the sketch and the thumbnail, which is what we're doing. Now, the second part is the rough. And I think it's important to separate this from the sketch because when we're doing the rough, we're thinking mostly about construction, um, sort of form, making sure that our drawing, that we're going to support our sort of finish. And it's important that we separate the rough from the finish because what you want to do is have an opportunity at the rough stage to erase, create a messy drawing, be sort of sketchier, um, draw through right? Add perspective lines. Basically, whatever you need to do to figure out how your finished line drawing is going to sort of um, be executed is going to finally happen. That's what we do at the rough stage. And if you're trying for a very high level of polish, often what you're going to need to do is sort of create and um, sort of iterate and do a lot of work here, right? You might need to erase stuff. And what we, we need to make sure that we're not hesitant when we're constructing for fear of ruining the finished look, right? So the finished look needs to be something where we focus on how do I make this line as nice as possible? How do I add texture? How do I add character, right? Like exactly what's happening. And I don't want to worry too much about the, the form and is my perspective right at that point. So we have these three separate mental states, right? And I think it's good to kind of say, um, make a clean break between the sketch and the rough, which is what we're sort of dealing with in this video, because that kind of means you can do your sketching any way you want, right? You can do it in a sketchbook. You can play around with different ways for coming up with ideas because there are some sort of situations where you have a vague idea in your mind and maybe it could be good to 
technically create that sketch in a different way because it helps you to think through the problem. So that's what I'll talk about today is different ways that, you know, you might go to sort of, you know, create a sketch and how, you know, sometimes those different ways can help us to come up with an idea or think through a, think through an idea and come up with a sketch. But I think it's important to kind of not have this kind of linked to the rough in any way. So basically the rough could have be done over a pencil sketch that I scanned in. It could be done over a, a color rough, right? I could actually do some color at the sketching phase. It could be done over a very, very rough sketch. It could be done over a very sort of um, detailed um, black and white grayscale sort of um, thumbnail. And, um, you know, that's the most important thing. So let's look at this sketch phase and some different sort of ways we can we can handle that. So again, I've got a uh, simple sort of drawing, sketching brush. And in this case, again, I'm just going to sort of leave it fairly dark. And we'll play around with some different sort of ways that we can sort of draw. Now, the first thing, the first way you can sort of play around with sketching is just, just draw little versions of whatever you're sort of doing, right? So again, the basic idea is, um, you know, just draw, draw how you would normally draw, just make it small, right? So the idea here is I'm going to sort of have a character, right? I'm sort of dealing with a portrait style cover, sort of page, right? Something like that. And there's basically just going to be sort of stuff around them, right? This is the basic idea. And I feel like it can be useful if you're sort of, if you're having hesitancy to you know, like getting started with this, just start super basic, right? Just sort of draw and be like, okay, that's kind of the idea, but that's a little bit boring, right? So you sort of, it's almost like iconically, we sort of say, I need to have a figure on the page, right? And they're the most important thing. So they're going to take up the most important, you know, most of the space and they're going to be um, in the center, <clears throat> And then I'm going to sort of have other stuff around that kind of tells a story of where they are and maybe helps us to understand their mood and, and sort of um, influence stuff. So that would be like the basic idea, okay? Um, but yeah, how, how you could sketch that. There's a couple of ways that I sort of do it. Um, but, you know, what I would suggest is that you sort of experiment with different sort of methodology, methodologies for sketching thumbnails and um, see what works for you, but also realize that different things are going to work, um, you know, differently depending on sort of what you want, right? So, you know, if I'm sort of imagining here, I might just have, again, the character, and they're kind of like sitting or maybe sort of standing here. And so, I, again, keep in mind these these videos are done um, there's, there's one take, um, there's no prep. Um, and I do it that way so that, um, you can kind of see exactly what's happening in the process. It does mean, um, you know, there'll be times where I'm kind of, uh, you know, going silent as my sort of brain tries to sort of draw stuff. Right. Um, so I do apologize for that. Um, but again, so often what I kind of do is, is think about, I, I sort of get get that stuff that's just going to be off the top of my mind. I get that out. All right, so I'm going to try some sort of, again, part of me is going to be like, let's not do the same pose you always do, right? Um, just like uh, sort of elbows on, you know, like, um, sorry, sort of elbow out, um, hand on sort of like hip, which I find is often just a really good way to sort of see more of the, the pose. Um, and I often do kind of, yeah, foot standing on something because, again, just kind of allows us to see a little bit more of that costume design. Um, <clears throat> so, again, it could be something simple like this, right? Maybe, again, some sort of armor. And I'm just going to vaguely kind of put in some of those sort of shapes, right? Like I've got some ideas for maybe some sort of armor or, you know, some stuff that might be made out of, um, again, sort of insects or um, stuff that um, she's kind of found 
um, that might be mixed in with some sort of like elven sort of architecture stuff. But yeah, again, maybe we could have like a interesting sort of tree behind her. Cause again, I was talking about interesting tree. I've got like a slightly more sort of gnarled root. Again, I, I feel like, um, my, my, my go-to inspiration for trees is always someone like Charles Vess or one of these people who kind of just draws these sort of epic fantasy sort of European trees that are all kind of like gnarled, right? It often sort of feels like, you know, there'll be an illustration there and you know, it feels like 90% of the effort went into the tree. <laughs> um, yeah. So it, again, right. Could just be something simple like this. So, um, again, you can do a mix of trying to kind of draw the boundary first and see if you, you see if fitting that in would help. Um, I often find it's kind of, uh, if I'm just sort of thinking through a problem, it can be better to kind of draw without, um, putting things in a box first. All right, and then I'll just, you know, later on, I'll kind of just draw a box around and sort of frame it. Um, like once I've got the major sort of stuff in there, you know, it kind of often helps to kind of be able to just think about that. So again, maybe there could be a another tree in the background here that would be more sort of like faded out, but you could have some cool roots or something like that. So I'm looking for, again, here, the idea of sort of um, some overlapping shapes, right? Some sort of like movement throughout the scene. That sort of stuff. So again, I, 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 I'm not really thinking too much about what things are or how or the why of it, right? Like, is this, maybe this sort of tree, I feel like this one could have sort of fallen over or something. Um, maybe there's like a sort of a rock here or something like that. Now, would all this stuff fit in the frame? Well, maybe if it was landscape, but I said portrait. Um, but again, it's not a breach. It's not, no one's telling me what to do, right? Like I don't have to, if, if I see a cool image, I'm going to do it, right? I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be too precious about it, but um, yeah. But again, I, I, I'm just kind of trying to let the idea flow a little bit, right? Not getting caught up in oh man, you know, is this, oh, I've got to stop, right? Like don't, don't edit at the same time. What you want to do is just let the ideas sort of flow, right? I could easily kind of be like, oh, but I said portrait. So there's no point in me drawing this. Well, I'm kind of just exploring, right? And I, I've learned to kind of trust that process. I think it's really important to kind of trust the ideation process and just sort of see what feels interesting. Um, because again, I can redraw this. I can take the same elements that I'm thinking about, right? That are sort of entertaining um, or are interesting me. And I can sort of say, well, let's try fit some of this, you know, over here in the next sketch. Or what you find is, um, you know, I found this before, right? It's like, oh yeah, this is not, this is not a good version of that. It's not a good version of the, the idea that maybe I wanted, but maybe it's better or maybe I'll just do it another time, right? Who knows? And uh, again, in terms of sort of time for this, um, I'm sort of anticipating that uh, this will be, you know, like an hour long video or something like that. We'll see. You probably know because you can see it once it's done. I, I, But that's sort of what I'm imagining, right? Um, because I'm sort of, again, anticipating about a 10 hour sort of image or something like that. So let's try to spend that hour doing some sketches and maybe more because again, I, I have to understand that, you know, talking it through is, is quite challenging, especially at the sketch phase. Right. So again, I feel like this is sort of kind of interesting, but it, it doesn't have much sort of mystery to it. So again, it might be important to kind of put in some extra trees, things like that to create that kind of layering, right? 
maybe some other sort of trees in the background. Maybe some trees here in the foreground, some new ones or something like that. Again, the more sort of depth we can add, the better. And again, all of these things will allow me to sort of create interesting overlaps. So we just, just, I mean, also, you know, just trying to get some basic sort of foreground, middle ground, background ideas in there. Um, yeah, so who knows, um, you know, like often, yeah, often it can be tricky to know how to frame these sort of things. So I'll do make a second layer, All right, and sort of move it around, see see what kind of looks interesting. Hmm. Yeah, some stuff like that, something like that might be cool. But you can also play with this again. So I made a new layer, just drew a square, you know, I can sort of crop in, you know, that might be interesting too. And something I could sort of do is sort of play around with right, play around with that. So sort of save that as an idea. Um right, again, maybe let's try and make it bigger again. Play around with that stuff. Again, so just, you know, again, ideas. Now, I think it is really valuable to try and do a range of these um, and not sort of give up too quickly. In this particular demo, I'm going to focus more on sharing a few different ideas and um, talking through the process a little bit better. But if you do find that you're... Um, your, your ideas are lacking or you're not quite happy with it. I think a really good sort of trick is to do um, a page of sort of 20 thumbnails um, or set a set a, a, a number. And what you'll find then is kind of, I, I, I think uh, if you're sort of having struggle, having trouble breaking free of your sort of, yeah, of, of just of your sort of natural inclinations or maybe you're not getting the, the the drama you you sort of want spending a bit more time on it i think is is really useful um and and setting a limit is a really good exercise because what you tend to find is that after a while after a while you kind of run out of ideas or i i certainly run out of ideas after a while and um yeah, having that sort of having that little sort of thing where you gotta you gotta do them. It's like ah, oh, I've got no ideas, but I've I've got to sort of do twenty. Um, I find it can actually bring out some really interesting ideas because you sort of you sort of run out of ide ideas pretty quick, and then you're like, oh, what what am I gonna do? Um, and, uh, and I've sort of, gi I've given this exercise to people quite a bit and, and it's, uh, again, it's like people kind of, <laughs> they don't, they normally don't like it. You know, people are like, oh man, after like five, I was done. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the idea. After five, you are done. 
but often that's what your brain needs, right? It needs that sort of, it needs that kind of thing where it's like, okay, what's, what's next? What else could I do? And you sort of let go, right? You let go of like, well, okay, you know, don't, I don't have any ideas, but you know, I got to do something. So let's just try something stupid, right? And then you start trying something stupid and, and you sort of get into the, the right rhythm, right? The right rhythm of process of sort of getting a little bit more into flow. Um, yeah, so I do find that to be quite a useful technique to kind of break out of uh, stagnation. So again, thinking about, again, pose where we're looking up a little bit more. I feel like looking up might be a good way to kind of see some of these trees. All right, so it's kind of maybe we're at sort of knee level or something like that. And again, we can try and sort of frame stuff. Try to do this one where I'm actually sort of drawing drawing it in first. And we could try something sort of a little bit trickier from a drawing perspective, right? Where we sort of think about, okay, here I've got my grid. All right, let's, let's try do this leg coming forward. problem here is this is kind of losing us this leg. But that might not be the worst thing. So this hands on this leg. Again, a lot of that just says like they're not in motion, you know, they're sort of standing there, but they're not just sort of just standing there because a lot of times people don't just stand there, you know. So I've got hair sort of hanging down here. This one, this hair would be sort of straight. sort of line here. And so in this case, again, tree root maybe here. Again, thinking about what could I have as a foreground. Now, I don't really know what's happening with perspective or anything here, right? I, I don't really, I don't really know. And it's really important at this phase to be a little bit more lenient on yourself in terms of drawing structure, um, getting the perspective 100%, um, getting your anatomy 100%. You obviously always want to try and make things as accurate as you can, but focus on ideas more than that stuff, right? Like in, in your stack of hierarchy of importance, put the ideas up the top. Um, I think that'll sort of serve you well. Again, some sort of shoulder pad. And the other thing is, um, you know, like I might find that some of these things are harder than I thought to, to really, uh, work out, right? Like sometimes the perspective I sort of choose, you know, does, just doesn't really work, right? Uh, when I actually sort of go to draw it out. Again, that, that stuff's fine. Let's, let's just focus on the idea, right? Because I can do another iteration of this, right? I can iterate the sketch. Um, so yeah, just focus on... Is it interesting? So I feel like I want to get this sort of this feeling not because again we've got perspective right maybe her leg is kind of down here right and I've got this stuff in front but again I really want our view to be quite low so 
I'm just thinking about what, how I can, how we can make. Again, we sort of got flow going down here, right? Sort of eye movement, and I could maybe sort of accentuate that. Try and have this tree coming at us. And again, um, the more, e even though we, even though I can say, oh, look, the perspective's right. You know, here's my ground plane. Here's the person. I need to tell the story of the space, right? It's so important to tell the story um, of what's happening with your perspective, right? What's happening with that space. So if I can kind of have some, some tree branches up here, right, that are kind of, sort of basically zigzagging into frame that sort of shows me that sort of eye movement happening right it's sort of it's getting that sort of eye movement and uh, again very similar to what people talk about when they're doing environment paintings and stuff is that you know they sort of say oh you know, you're doing an environment painting from a compositional standpoint Right. And sort of what you want to do is, you know, oh, OK, you're sort of doing a, you know, a castle on a hill or something like that. But, you know, that's not an interesting sort of image. You know, you sort of and, you know, no matter how many how many sort of clouds or interesting things you put in it, um, what they always sort of say is, you know, you kind of want like a little path. Right. That sort of tells the story of. Right. Of how you're sort of character is going to move through that, right? And it, it contextualizes it from a narrative standpoint of like, here is the, here's like, you know, firstly, here's the human element, right? The path. And here's us sort of leading into it, right? And they often sort of talk about this idea of, you know, having this kind of S-shaped path, right? It it's it's doesn't have to be a path, right? It doesn't have to be that. Um, composition is mostly about moving your eye through the frame. Right. So again, as long as I'm sort of moving the eye through the frame, everything will be OK. And again, we can kind of have that sort of zigzag motion or something like that. Um, and that will sort of work there. So let's move this down, see if there's anything sort of to this. Um, Again, not sure I'll not sure if that's all gonna fit or whatever. But again, we can refine this when it comes to construction phase, right? Got this tree coming down here. And so again, this is sort of telling us about right, the sort of the perspective going this way. Right? And so if you sort of look at that grid, right? we are going to see quite a bit of sort of movement from these tree branches. And again, if we see more of it, right, they would kind of come out right into the frame. Because often, often what happens is it's like, well, th there I've got a good idea but I don't know whether that's going to fit into, I don't know whether I can tell that story, right? Of like the canopy kind of coming out in this, with, with this sort of frame, you know what I mean? But what that also means is like, well, maybe we could kind of focus instead of sort of showing this stuff, right? Maybe we could just kind of focus on, right? Like this side of it, you know, going up even if I kind of want to have that figure in there. And again, a lot of these things sort of, it's like, how big does the figure need to be? Because if it really is just about the figure, then maybe I can, you know, maybe I, you just have to say, you know what, this, it's not about trees. <laughs> it's not about trees. Let's not make it about trees. So again, here, I, I'm going to do a bit of this stuff I was sort of talking about, which is sort of drawing, drawing outside the frame. And I feel like this is a really good idea. It just kind of helps to, helps me, right? It's not, no one's going to see this, but it helps me understand like, wh what am I drawing, <laughs> right? Where, where are all these things going to go? 
Um, and at the thumbnail stage is that this is the time to do this, right? Not at, you know, not, not when you're doing the rough, because now I've got the, the space, right? I've got the page space. It's all cruisy. So yeah, again, I feel like here I'm being somewhat indulgent. Just drawing trees. I don't know whether that's going to really kind of work. Um, so yeah, again, could we make this more interesting, right? Maybe we could make it like kind of like a willow tree or something like that. And that might allow us again to tell that story of like the depth. Again, just make it like a bit more, a bit more fantasy, more interesting. Certainly for me, it's fantasy. We don't have many willow trees in Australia. Um, maybe there's probably some places in the world where they're like, oh man, that's not, that's not even a little bit fantasy. <laughs> um, but anyway, I, I feel like having some sort of leaves coming down might really help sell that that idea of um just of there being sort of interesting depth right just of being something there right some reason for the tree to kind of place that character in space and also again like a big part of what i'm doing is trying to um, a lot of the internal struggle is, is going to be sort of me saying, oh, this is kind of what I want to do, but then sort of pulling it back and saying, but th this would make a better demo idea because I'll be able to show this, right? So, you know, if, if we do have a lot of interesting depth with the, right, with the, these sort of tree things, it allows us to talk about foreground, middle ground, background, it allows us to think about how we sort of handle that from a process standpoint. Um, all of those cool things, right? Um, so, you know, part of me is like, oh, I kind of like this one, but uh, this one is sort of cool, right? Because it, it, from a demo perspective. So again, remember, there's, there's me, there's what I do, and then there's me sort of saying, but this is a cool idea from a demo perspective. So this doesn't, I've got some of this sort of tree stuff here. I'm not 100% sort of sold on this. This is feeling like exactly like all the other trees I, I draw. And we'd sort of have, again, behind her, we'd have more of those sort of branches going out. And for when we're sketching some of these kind of things, right, like having this kind of network of branches, right, coming, and I'm imagining they're sort of coming out from the back of this tree, right? That stuff feels like, oh man, that's a huge pain to draw that stuff. But if we, when we're dealing with a very high level of polish for an illustration, that can really help, right? Because it's like, we need something back there. We need something to show the depth going back, right? Um, and uh, you know sometimes that can that can really be sort of handy. So again, I like the idea of there being sort of some sort of again like another sort of tree or something like that in the background that we can draw, right? Some some focus in the background. That's kind of cool. Now again, I, I'm a, mo a lot of what I'm focusing on here is just the background, the composition, because I'm probably actually going to deal with the character and their sort of design at the rough phase, right? Not at this phase. Um, so I'm kind of just like, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to come up with something interesting for the character, right? Like, don't worry about that. As long as I frame them and give myself like a nice pose to do it, right? As long as we sort of do that, I think we'll be fine. So 
So yeah, again, sort of interesting. <clears throat> now, this this sort of thing will tend to get sort of complicated, right? It's going to tend to get um, a bit messy. So let's look at what we can do to sort of clarify that ourselves. And also I'm thinking about how we sort of frame this. All right, so again, I'm just going to draw a square. And like, where, where could I frame this? Again, I feel like, I feel like sort of, if the character is smack being in the middle, it's a little bit less important for them to be big because they're still very important because they're in the center. The other thing we have to understand is, um, you know, like exactly how big are we, you know, exactly how big does this need to be? It might, it might be a little bit narrower than that. Um, again, I've kind of got an image. I've kind of got a like comic book cover style sort of proportion, like European comic book style cover proportion that I'm sort of thinking of. Um, but I don't really know it yet. And then that's another thing is like, don't sweat too much about that. We can always fudge the proportions a little bit. Um, when, as in we can take our thumbnail and stretch it a little bit this way and that, um, as long as we're sort of roughly there with that proportion, that's okay. But what you might want to do is, you know, exactly figure out that proportion first and, um, yeah, make sure that you, um, you know, draw draw some little thumbnails out um, just of the, the the frame so that you know exactly what it's going to be. But I'm not doing that now. Now, what we're we saying? Yeah, this is messy. Let's try let's try see what happens once we sort of add a bit of tone. So this is something I, I will often do is sort of work up and put in some sort of tone to just separate out elements in the image and, and sort of be like, okay, what, what's going to happen when I do this? What's going to happen when I do that? And um, this helps me to visually understand the, the separate elements I've got. So again, we could kind of have the idea that, uh, and, and you could do multiple ones of these, right? But I think the idea that, again, she is kind of maybe in the shadow of the tree all right. Now these these sort of willow tree fronds and stuff like that. These branches could be light, they could be dark. I'm kind of just playing with them to show the depth here. But I don't really have a solid sort of idea there. Um, but yeah, mostly what I'm trying to do is block in some of those shapes to kind of see whether the silhouette is going to read. And again, it's not really going to tell, this is just going to give me a rough idea. And um, maybe, you know, next time I come to it or, or, you know, what you might find is if you've sort of got many, many, you know, sketchy layers everywhere and that's really bothering you. Okay. Just add a bit of tone, right? You'll find in, in many, in many cases that is going to just clarify the image a little bit, make it easier to understand what's going on. That's probably getting, again, there's, there's a point where it's like, if I start adding too much tone to this, I'm going to have to keep going. <laughs> So again, what I'm going to do, let's select that, invert, um, control shift, invert. And let's just sort of fade this stuff out. So I can maybe see what that might look like. So again, another thing you could do is start to punch out, you know, if, if you feel like, oh, that's kind of close, but Oh, that's a little bit messy, right? Like maybe I need to kind of see what would happen if I just clarify some of this, like go for it, start painting over. Again, what I, what I said early on is 
you are going to discover different sketching techniques that are going to help you at different stages of sketching, right? Um, they're going to help us maybe just clarify again like this, you know, like clarify the silhouette. Is this going to work? Because again, there's a difference between like having something there, having the visual noise and, um, you know, having it be high contrast, right? So everything in the image is going to be there. We draw it all out. But what we focus on is, you know, is what we choose to focus on. That's very different. Um, but here you can see, again, I'm just trying to sort of say like, all right, if we, yeah, if we really focus on this, this silhouette, right? Is that going to change anything? And here's where, you know, again, I can sort of start drawing over. I can adjust some of those sort of things that I've drawn. What I might do is like actually put this on a separate monitor so I can sort of um, do a few things. This, this is normally what we do when we're, um, you know, we've got a big illustration and we can't see the whole thing at once. But what this actually allows me to do is kind of see see this along with my other sketches at the same time. So I can sort of be here and then I can look up and see it at the same time. Yeah. So again, is that, is that interesting enough? So yeah, part of me is like, I really want this kind of, this kind of flow here. And maybe it's more important to kind of have that flow than it is to kind of have these things falling down. Or maybe I can just emphasize that kind of flow of that, of these branches. Even though there's sort of other things there. But again, we could make a new layer, right? So you can see there we've got like continuing clarification of like what's going on. Now this is messy, right? But that's fine. That's a, this is a sketch. I, I still feel like, you know, something that's this rough, it, we're still going to be okay to kind of send it to an art director or something like that. You would maybe not write at this stage, right? We, we might want a bit of something else, but yeah. So just looking at maybe some other things I could do to add that complexity to the background. Maybe some, again, maybe some other trees. Maybe ditch that willow idea. So again, within the same sketch, I can, I can iterate. What we could also do is say, let's try to play around with a pose, but, you know, because I'm not convinced that's going to sort of work, right? Just because the, the foreshortening is like a bit, is a bit tricky. So a new layer. And again, I could, I could easily just keep drawing with the old brush. In this case, I'm going to got this kind of like sketchy brush I'm just going to keep going with that and with this one I'm basically going to try and just move this leg over here again it feels just in terms of what feels sort of natural And then again, sort of try and draw through. Have some leg here. That's not, not the best leg drawing. 
that's the right. And again, she'd probably have some sort of armor and stuff. Maybe like a against scabbard or sword or something. So again, I feel like that maybe that works a little bit better. But yeah, so you know we can hack away at at it this way. Again, new layer. I, I do a lot of these things on new layers so I can sort of go back, you know, if I want. Um, I do find that sort of really helps. <clears throat> now, we could, you know, one of the other things that, from a demo perspective, that I feel like I really want, that, that I've been sort of thinking like, ah, oh, this would really help to explain some of that stuff, is look at kind of maybe having some of her figure in light and some of it in dark, right? And I feel like that this might be a good opportunity to do that, right? So we could kind of maybe have like, you know, again, a lot of this stuff, a lot of her sort of like the top of her body is in sort of shadow, right? And then behind it, we've sort of got sort of lighter colors and maybe the, the so the light is kind of coming almost sort of from in front of this tree and it's kind of coming down. And what that would mean is that these sort of bits of this tree here are in light as well. All right, so this is kind of lit. All right, that's kind of lit. All right, and she's got sort of... So something maybe like this yeah so you can see it this this is just a complete mess right um and just in terms of process so I, the the point here and the reason i'm sort of going with this and, and just sort of going crazy is to say like remember I, i'm not i'm not kidding when i say that you you need to be fluid with your process and, and not get sort of caught up in like oh but you know now this is looking messy or whatever right like it, it that none of that stuff matters too much you know I have some sort of hair going everywhere i feel like again one of the main things that i was sort of missing is i feel like i want her to have kind of wild crazy hair so it feels very sort of um yeah, again, that wilderness sort of vibe that I'm trying to get. So again, you can see here, it's like I'm almost sort of painting. And um, your painting skills, you know, if you're sort of taking this class rate, right, a lot of people who are, you know, I, I find are kind of into drawing more than painting. This sort of stuff can be a little bit more of a challenge. So um, again, this this might be a case where you, you need to spend a little bit more time you know, on that sort of rendering phase, right, to make sure that it's kind of working. Um, but yeah, but the point there is like, yeah, it's like a little bit of painting, but I know that I'm going to be able to kind of, you know, replicate that once we get to the actual um, drawing um, and rendering part of it, right? That won't be a problem. But again, so I, I like I like some of the things that are happening here because I feel like it will give me a good opportunity to show some different um, sort of techniques and, and bits and pieces. And um, again, with, with sketches, often like what what I'm showing, like you you may look at it and go, uh, yeah, I don't know what I have no idea what this is. Um, th these are for you, you know. These sketches are for you. If you um, if you're not at the stage where you're um, sort of able to do this and show someone, um, and maybe that is something that you you do actually want to do, right? You you want to sort of work professionally and show art directors, um, or maybe you know you're already working professionally, but you just want to sort of up that part of your game, then you know feel free to do multiple versions of this. You know, do some sketches for you, and then do some sketches based on that you know, for your art director. Um, or another thing that I find is really important, even if you're just a hobbyist, right? Um, 
you know, it, it can be good to, you know, work on how you're going to create that, um, that sort of finished image. And, you know, even if you don't need to take it to a high level, it can be really good to, because then what I find is like, you can really easily come back to an image. If you do work up the thumbnail and really kind of work it out, um, you know, what you find is it's so much easier to come back to it, right? If you've got a really solid plan. So the idea with a lot of these, uh, these sort of cover style illustrations is like, I, I'm kind of leaving some room here for like sort of text and maybe here for text. And, um, maybe i maybe that'll be sort of like, you know, the, um, you know, text about the workshop or something like that. Um, or, but if this was a cover, um, for a comic book or something like that, then again, you know, your sort of title would be here at the moment. It feels a little bit sort of, um, yeah, a little bit empty. Um, So yeah, again, I'm just I keep drilling down on this idea, and um, probably we'll, we'll sort of leave it there. I mean, I like this one, and and I feel like this is a good space to always get to where you feel like like oh, I've got like a solid choice, right? Where you know this is going to sort of do some of the things that I want to do. Um, and if we check, I sort of lost track of time, but if we check, we're at sort of like 50 minutes in. Um, so I probably got time for a couple more ideas. What and what I might do is say, let's let's try two more ideas, and we'll try and make them sort of quick ones, because again I feel like I've learned a few tricks that I might be able to employ with um, with this idea through doing this one. Right, I sort of iterated, and that's really got my brain thinking. You know, it, I, I'm really sort of thinking there. Um, and not all of that thinking has to relate directly to this, right? Some of that thinking can be used for, for other things. So, just thinking about what will happen once I add leaves to this. I can have some, I can have some, I can have some serious foreground leaves, I think, like over here, right? That are sort of just coming in from off screen. So that might be again, an abstract sort of thing to think. And, and that's like a big part of this is something I really wanted to include in this is the feeling that kind of like we're looking at this character sort of through the, the foliage, right? Like there's, there's that sort of mystery to it, you know? I don't know how this would play out with them. Um, <laughs> um, again, the fact that there's meant to be light coming down from here. Again, I don't know whether those leaves could be sort of lit. Some of them could be. Maybe. Don't know. Have to play around with that later. Um, let's try a few more. I'll go back to the 2B pencil. And what I want to try is like, what haven't we tried here? Well, <clears throat> this one, she's sort of looking at us, right? And I'm like, not convinced that's actually what we want to do. Another one that I feel like we could do is again, I had some idea for like creatures and things like that, it might be fun to sort of see if we can get that kind of working. So let's have a go at that, All right? So let's sort of try something a little bit sort of closer to the camera. Can I always draw that rib cage too big? Try to find that thing. So it might be good to kind of see, again, have this kind of crazy wild hair. So I like the idea of kind of her body, like maybe sort of, yeah, sort of semi sort of profile in the face. And it 
maybe just kind of like, like very sort of standard. Pose. With light. So again, there could be something to her pose just sort of being super, like just sort of static and just sort of stoic, right? Like, you know, it, it's sort of not um, objectifying her form as much. Um, and that, that might be something that's kind of interesting, right? Maybe there could be some sort of little insects or things. Again, something like that kind of on her. Again, I don't know what, what this is about. I don't I don't think we'll sort of get to it, right? But again, it's just that idea of kind of being very raw that I think is sort of interesting. Get maybe some sort of leaves. as a cape or something like that. This would be much more along the sort of the forest lines. I feel like the really crazy hair like that is not again, it'd be good to sort of contrast some of the more crazy leaves and other things with sort of straight hair. But again, like the, the, the interesting thing about thumbnailing is like it, it's, you know, when when you're doing it professionally, there is this idea that like, oh, yeah, but, you know, I want to pick this one and, you know, this one's not going to get picked and, you know, which one's going to get picked. And, you know, often when we do work professionally, um, you know, the, if the, the unused thumbnails sort of do get thrown away. But if you're just doing personal work, like there's, there's no, nothing to say you can't just do them all right it's like oh this is just a character i made you know and um you know just keep doing sort of cool illustrations so you know think of it as as you know concept design to a certain degree so again sort of very centered like, I don't think those guys are, I think that's not the right place for them. Get place her slightly. Out of frame. Sorry, slightly to the left of, sort of center. All right, so maybe they can sort of be here. So again, there's some of these things, right, where I'm like, I feel like this is kind of closer to my idea of the character, right? Um, but it's sort of not as, probably not as interesting. As the other one from an illustration standpoint. And good to think about this stuff, right? Think about like when you're trying to hit a particular time, right? Um, your illustration is, is going to take X amount of time and, and you, you sort of know you need to hit a particular sort of deadline for it, you know? 
think about like how, how complicated the, are these images going to be, you know, um, should I, you know, should I, should I pick this one or should I pick that one? You know, a big part of what I'm sort of dealing with is I'm sort of saying I, I need something that's going to be complicated enough to allow us to look at some of those other possibilities. Um, so yeah, this one might just be a bit simple. But I like the kind of idea. Again, similar to this. Um, now we could try again some sort of crazier, sort of more interesting poses. Um, you know, that might be something we could kind of look at. Let's try again. Sort of put shoulder. Got sort of because this could be a cool way to sort of show that she's a bit more sort of like of of the wilderness. And again, I, I think that all of these the, the the real key here is to understand that drawing small and, and doing these little gesture sketches is kind of a skill unto itself, right? It is something you kind of have to practice. Um uh, because it is it's part of that that practice side the soma the somatic knowledge right um i can know how to draw a figure but you know drawing a small figure <laughs> is quite challenging you know that's one of the one of the first things that people um fall prey to i think when they draw comics certainly i fell prey to this is kind of like oh i, I was good at sort of drawing um uh, you know, figures, but I, but I'd always kind of draw them from a particular angle at a particular size, you know, and then when, when we sort of got to draw them from different angles at different sizes, it's, it's like, I was like expecting the angles, but not the sizes. Right. And it's like, oh, wow, that's a different skill. Cause I can't show all that stuff. You know, I, I need to sort of simplify. I need to um, abstract some things need to suggest some things. Same thing here. It'll take you a while if you're not used to sort of sketching small to figure out like how much detail do I need? Um, you know, like what, what do I need? When do I, where do I need it? And also I think you will also need, it's not even possible to do that from a theoretical standpoint. You actually need to practice putting this, putting them into your sort of process, right? And, and actually finish them, right? And once you kind of finish them, then you realize like, oh yeah, that's what I need to indicate. These are the details that I need to figure out at that thumbnail stage, right? So again, I like the, I like the pose. here. A bit more interesting. <clears throat> not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I, I don't think the construction's going to hundred percent sort of work here, but yeah, maybe this could be like a bow. Or again, maybe just kind of like a spear or something. This might be an interesting way to kind of show that tree, right? So again, if we think about ground plane, right, we're sort of viewing this from above. So let's rough in a little grid if we kind of need to. Again, think about where that tree is going to be. So it's going to be like a tree. Kind of coming out this way. Yeah, drawing way, way fast. But this is useful because I think if I did this right, I'd want to have some of these, some of these big roots, right, coming down this way.
So again, some sort of wildness to what she's kind of wearing. Maybe this way we could kind of see those kind of creepy, I don't know what kind of insects they would be, kind of bugs. Maybe they could be like, yeah, don't know. <laughs> it's just one of those things. I got it in my head. I'm like, could that work? Um, you know, and, and I feel like it's sort of, it's really important if you do have these ideas, right? Where all that kind of stuff is like, you know, colliding. Yeah. Just be, just sort of, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, right? Like if, it, if that's fine, you know, um, but I'm still going to keep trying, you know, cause it's sort of in my, it's in my brain. Um, all right, so this is, so I'm like, I don't even have space for this. Uh, where am I going to put it? Let's, um, because yeah, I just want to keep the same. I don't know why it's important to me to keep the same aspect ratio. There we go. Let's move that over there let's move this one make it a bit small. I still like that one, but just think this is a better version of that. So can, can we, at the last minute, change our idea? <clears throat> Let's think, again, I, I'm sort of only halfway through this one. But let's see if framing it is going to be interesting or not. Yeah, maybe a bit bigger than that. Maybe not. Maybe that might be something like that. All right. So again, I feel like there's there's some interesting stuff here and allows me to sort of tell a bit more of that kind of story. And um, yeah, we should be able to get some of that sort of overlap. Tree. So we still need to show that kind of depth, but I can probably, again, play around with that same lighting idea if I do this. I can probably again still have some sort of tree roots or something over here. Maybe another. Again, trees don't grow that close to each other, do they? But maybe I could have some of these roots going here again, sort of helping us with those leading lines and things. Maybe Again, some sort of small trees growing here. Again, showing us some sort of overlap. Let's 
Now this might all end up being too much, but I just do want to play with that sort of that visual depth. And again, maybe just again the idea of sort of us seeing her kind of through the trees, right? Sort of looking down. And this will be again a very easy way to sort of show depth because because it's abstract because I don't have to be like where would these leaves actually be? <laughs> um, anyway, so that's a giant mess now again as as the other one was was. Let's see if we can clarify some of that. So again, we could potentially have, again, like some of these, like this in shadow, right, sort of under here, but maybe her, her arms are in the light, this guy is in the light, and again, that helps us to play around with that idea of, um, you know, how can we, how can we, from a process standpoint, do that? How can we get that happening? When do we figure out that light? How do we figure it out? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Again, <clears throat> good opportunity for creating abstract shapes because we have a lot of freedom with these leaves this way. And again, a lot of this will be kind of in shadow. But maybe not, maybe we could just imagine, again, th there's no rule about where this light is or isn't. So we can just kind of say, you know, light is streaming through the trees and behind her on the ground is lit up and she's in shadow because because it looks cool, you know what I mean? Um, often a lot of, uh, you know, if, if you're wanting to have some form of light, lighting, um, you know, a lot of it is, is sort of organizing your lighting scenario so that, um, yeah, you like, you can do that, you know, like you, you need to be like, okay, let's not sort of do something really obvious where I can see, um, you know, I can see where the light is and where where it is and wouldn't be and you know all that kind of stuff right um because that that means you're going to be sort of stuck so sometimes you've sort of got freedom to make very creative choices right sometimes you don't and um a, a big part of that is understanding you know like where where those rules lie i really think with me with so many of these things it is just a matter of you going through the process right starting here um, you know, going through, going from A to B and then figuring out like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, I, I, I needed this thing when I was here, you know, I should have figured this out at the thumbnail, um, you know, or conversely, I spent ages on this thumbnail. It didn't make any difference at all. <laughs> you know, like, uh, I had to throw away all this sort of rendering and nonsense that I kind of created. Um, again, the most important thing is you find your process here for creating thumbnail sketches. 
Um, I think we're kind of out of time. Um, and again, I've really only done sort of like one, two, three, you know, four sort of ideas. Um, again, if, if you want to sort of practice this, I think it's, it's a really good idea to just kind of like keep going, you know, spend a couple of hours on this, um, you really get deep into it. Um, I kind of like this one. We might go with this one instead of that. I didn't expect that I'd find something more interesting than that, but I feel like also, you know, this is such a standard, uh, anatomical kind of pose. It might be good to sort of talk about from a construction drawing standpoint, how we, um, construct the figure that isn't just sort of, you know, straight onto us and how we connect her with the ground plane. So that might be a really fun thing to sort of talk about. Um, yeah, so I'm like, I'm sort of leaning towards this one, but, but we'll see. Right. And again, you know, you can, we can do them all. I can always come back and, and do sort of a different one or whatever, but you know, the, all of this is, is sort of an internal process as well as an external process. So this one is kind of messy, but it sort of got me thinking about what I feel would and wouldn't work what I need, you know, I'm like, oh, this will work. And then I sort of hack away and I'm like, oh, you know what, that, that's, that's not really doing what I want, you know? And so as I progress, I'm probably able to do some of the things that I sort of um, realized would work and not do some of the things I realized wouldn't work as I, you know, in a much more fluid way. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's been illuminating in sort of, you know, just understanding how to sort of um, deal with sketches. The other thing that I sort of haven't gone over but is sort of worth talking about just very briefly is that you can kind of start with the vague shape right so you can kind of start with you know saying like oh you know I, I just kind of want this shape here you know and I want this sort of shape there and then you know you can once you've sort of blocked in that idea where's uh where's my uh, always lose that um, yeah, you know, you, you can then sort of say, yeah, well, now that I've sort of got that, let's, um, you know, let's actually draw something there, All right? Let's draw the, draw that character on that sort of vague blob, but sometimes it's good to think in vague blobs. Sometimes it's good to sort of start with the character. Sometimes you might want to start with the background. Sometimes you might want to start with the frame. The whole point is that you end up with an idea that you think is really cool and does all of those things that you want. Um, once you do that, you can work it up. You know, we can do another pass on this, right? And maybe we will to kind of like show how that sort of functions. Um, but the most important thing here is that you find an image and an idea that kind of ticks all the boxes. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next step.